Hi, and welcome to the Beer Temple. I am Chris Quinn, coming to you once again from downstairs at the Beer Temple shop. I just did my Lord Hobo Boom Sauce show, and I'm going to run right into this show here. I was listening this morning as I was getting ready to come into the store to the Beer Temple, I'm um, sorry, not to the Beer Temple, the Good Beer Hunting podcast with my friend Michael Kaiser and he happened to be down in Athens, Georgia doing a little beer tour down there and I came in and somebody had recently dropped off this uh, Creature Comforts beer so I figured I would give this one a shot you know Athens, Georgia I'd just been hearing about it um, and what a great burgeoning beer scene it is so I had one of these uh, cans that was just brought in again by a, one of the awesome awesome customers and uh travelers who come into the shop so thank you guys so much for bringing these beers um i, I can't tell you how awesome it is because there's just no way i would otherwise be able to try these beers um so what do we have here we have the creature comforts tropicalia ipa um it is uh you know in the last episode i was talking about this boom sauce and this you know new england style being very much in the the vanguard right now this more tropical fruity uh, oftentimes a little bit more yeast presence, cloudy, and a little less bitter than, you know, classic IPAs or even classic West Coast IPAs, which I think it's kind of a, uh, um, kind of a, a mutation of. Um, so uh, let's see. I mean, this one says it's ripe and juicy. So that's kind of exactly how I was referring to some of these, you know, Vermont style IPAs and so on and, and such, uh, in, in, in past episodes. So maybe this is, is, you know, the same style, you know, they're calling it creature, I'm um, sorry. Um, creature comforts is calling this the Tropicalia IPA. And, uh, let's see. All right. All right. Well, first and foremost, it appears to have, well, first and foremost, it, it's got some sediment in there, but, um, still rather clear you know in between all that sediment i guess the sediment is chunky enough that it is uh still a fairly clear beer um but you can see all these little like you know bits and pieces kind of floating around in there what are they i don't know uh is it it could be proteins it could be yeast it could be just general sediment it could be little bits of hops probably a combination of all of them so um a little bit lighter uh well, lighter, lighter than what? It's uh, kind of a golden orange. I'm still in the boom sauce uh, mind state. Um, decent amount of head. Definitely. So this was recently brought in, so I have every reason to believe it's fresh. Um, there is no uh, dating on the can. You know, guys know how I feel about that. I feel, um, you know, maybe these guys don't have the ability to, uh, you know, put a date on each individual can. You know, that that's a cost that they have to decide to, to do or not do. Maybe they um, put it on the individual well, cases or something like that. No way for me to know if it's fresh or not or how fresh it is. And why did I say that? Because I saw, I heard, I read ripe and juicy and the smell to me wasn't necessarily ripe and juicy. It is a little more uh, slightly resinous at first is what I thought. But then when I went back in for that second smell, it, it, I get more of a, almost like a candied pineapple smell. And I don't mean um, candy that has pineapple flavor. I mean candied pineapple. Some marmalade as well. Hint of biscuit. Just orange, orange blossom. Definitely some kind of biscuity malt flavor to it. Just kind of letting the, the bitterness grow. It's often the, the, you know, the last flavor to kind of come onto your palate. Um, I heard from uh, Randy Mosher, the kind of beer guru, that bitterness is a much more complex flavor than maybe sweet and salty is. 
for us to interpret. So the reason it comes on later as you're drinking it is because it takes your brain longer to determine, oh, this is bitterness. And that's why it kind of comes on afterwards. Um, if that's true, and I have every reason if Randy Mosher told me that to believe that it is true, that's pretty awesome. It's got a very um, nice light mouth feel. Um, aqueous, you know, is a, is a nice way to say, um, it is a way to say watery when you like it. When you don't like it, the mouth feel, then you call it watery. But if it's pleasantly light, you, you call it aqueous, or at least I do. Um, so pleasantly light, very low bitterness. Uh, a nice balance of the uh, the orange and the malt, like kind of the orange from the hops and the orange from the malt, this classic kind of marmalade flavor but with a little bit of a U.S. tweak to it, it feels, uh, to me anyway. Um, I'm a well-made balanced IPA. A little light maybe in the, in the, in the mouthfeel for me, but you know that that biscuity it's it's also dry so it's funny there's this like biscuity flavor but it's also very dry so almost like some of the not not like an ordinary bitter would be you know not the special bitter esb you know it's very light but it has that crackery bready um biscuity note to it uh this does as well i don't know I'm, who knows maybe they're using a little bit of maris otter or or something or just a hint of uh, caramel malt something like that who knows I apologize for that like internal burp that I'm sure my mic picked up and was completely gross, but I could tell you I'll edit it out, but knowing me, I'm not gonna edit it out. Guys, uh, yeah, so it's Sunday morning. I just went over the boom juice. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's good, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, yeah, this beer is is very good too, uh, in its own little way. Um, you know, Is this a world-class, exceptional IPA that you must trade for, you must go out and get? No. Does every beer have to be that? No. If I was served this beer with lunch, I would be quite happy with this beer. Um, yeah, in fact, I think I like this one a little bit more. Um, I like that it's got a little bit of, um, I don't know, uniqueness to it. I like that they're not afraid of some of these biscuity flavors. Um, quite light and, and really not very bitter at all. I mean, finally, now that I've had a bunch, the bitterness is starting to come to me. Um, but still, uh, a great beer, and all beers should be a little bit different. Not everything that says IPA needs to be super bitter. Um, so I'll have my third pour. I think that should tell you something. As I get ready to uh, tell you guys thank you so much, as always, for watching, I always appreciate you guys. Uh, leaving feedback and uh, rating us on iTunes. I'll say it again. We have a new podcast called the Insiders Roundtable. Not for everyone. It is a long-form audio-only show, about an hour and a half long, where I bring in industry professionals and we talk about different beer topics. People have been really, really liking it, so it's worth maybe listening and see if it's something that you would be into. Very different from a kind of staring at the camera and uh, talking about the beer that I have in my hand. But, um, hey. It's, it's, it's to some people's tastes, and I have a blast doing it. So anyway, guys, thank you so much as always. Until next time, I've got some great IPAs to drink, and hopefully you do too. Cheers.